Um, so what cheese do you want to see next map? Uh, Tessu, Ooh, do you Robert want to see the murky C9 2015 BlizzCon style? <laughs> well, let's have a look at the map and let's decide from there. How about just the same one, Grubby? <laughs> How about exactly the same <laughs> cheese on Sky Temple? Or maybe they can reproduce Fnatic's feet on Sky yeah, Temple. Yeah, maybe Chien the bot lane control one. Ariel Tass, problem is Tassadar is not being allowed to go through the draft no. at all. So reminded, uh, best of seven, only one map left after this. If good guys win this, we will be heading to a final seventh map and it will be on Cursed Hollow. We'll be ending it about as standard as it can get. That's the not, murky though, map. That's the murky <laughs> map. According to China, Dragonshire is the murky map. But either way, right now, this could still be the end of the series. Yeah. If Leftovers, potentially with less cheese this time. If they're able to take the victory on Sky Temple, then they will take Good Guy's spot in HGC Europe. Good Guys, though, if they win, it drops to that last final map in the form of a tiebreaker. So far, it seems like Team Good Guys has a high level of lactose intolerance. They will not <laughs> permit this cheese. Uh, but the next map is probably going to be a lot more standard. Now, let's talk about what we know about Sky Temple. The map objective inexorably pushes back the fortifications of the opponent. Uh, you do not even need direct contact with their structures. You shoot lasers as long as you stand on the temple. And that means that the layers of protection rapidly evaporate. And that means that heroes like Illidan with the Hunt, Genji and Abathur through Symbiote ganks can be very threatening to enemy solo laners. Absolutely. We have a lot of games on Sky Temple that result in low death counts, simply because the teams cannot afford to be that far out. Yeah, we see a lot of glow potential, like you said, games on the, uh, of that style. But we also have to remember, just like you mentioned at the very start, the kind of composition we can see in the form of the uh, win bot temple, grab boss, go through bot lane, win game. The fast food strat, as it is called on this map, to just end the game as quick as possible. That so is that available for both teams. So that you can make it to the restaurant before it closes. Exactly. That was the original meaning by Fnatic. Yes, due to the fact that in Sweden everything closes quite early. And to be fair, that's not out of the question considering that at least one of their players, Lobber, is Swedish for the leftovers. So that could be the potential opportunity here. But this is, was a good guy's map choice. So that takes a little bit of credence away. Leftovers starting off with the grey main ban. The map score is a lot closer than I would have thought. Team Good Guy is certainly a very good team with experience against the best. But yeah. leftovers didn't even break a sweat throughout most of Open Division, but now they're in a 3-2 to two score. They dared to risk it all in the last game and will now be looking at just a small two, uh, one map lead with uh, one out of three, well, one out of two maps needed to be won yeah. for them. It's all they need. They have so much space to do what they want here. They, cho they choose to use that space to take the ETC first pick. Is this the second time we've seen him today, right? Uh, let's see, ETC has been banned mostly in that first spot three times in a row. This is the third ETC that we will see. Today or just overall? Um, I'm not, oh, yeah, I, meant just I was today. looking at the wrong sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been mostly banned so far. We have seen very little ETC. On Dragonshire, he was used by Leftovers with Stage Dive. That was it. The rest has mostly been banned. Yep, there we go. So he actually makes it in this time. Rhaegar being picked up very early by good guys, and they bring out the Arthas with it. This very much leads towards a Lunara as their damage dealer. You always want to draft heavy sustain oh, and uh, protection. Yeah, Lunara or Illidan. Oh, yes. They you take the Arthas. really oh, opened up for an Illidan there. Yeah, yeah. Anti hero on Illidan. It's a good map for it. Team Good Guys ran Illidan quite a bit in the last few play days in Pro Division. And Arthas, one of his primary counters. I mean, this has got to be obvious for leftovers. Yeah. So if you think you're against Illidan, you need something to block the hand, and you need something to either blind his attack speed or reduce it. You want spell damage over auto attack damage. So Sonya would be a good pick. Um, Sonya, Li Ming yeah. to a degree, Uther to stop Mur that the hand. Murad did it. They wanted the second tank, but that's two very high hit point tanks as well. But Mur uh, Muradin does offer attack speed slow. I think Uther Sonia would work out pretty well. It's going to be Uther cooldown. Yeah. Very sensible picks, good spell damage, and also Horrify to stop follow up to Illidan's The Hunt. Yep, it's pretty good. Horrify, and of course, Uther has multiple stunts himself. He could even go for Divine Storm if that's the path they want to go down. A lot of times we'll see Divine Shield when he's paired with a cooldown just due to the fact that cooldown is made of paper mache and baby powder. 
so they want to keep him alive. Don't forget the importance of boss control on Sky Temple. The temples are important, but usually games are won with the boss finally. Uh, Horrify is there, Face Smelt, Divine Shield, Leftovers has much so far. Whereas Team Good Guys, all they've got is damage and healing so far. A little bit of roots and slows, but they still need something. Now Emerald Wind, Brightwing will be removed. Yep, that would have been a really good boss control. Great second healer to give some AoE healing along with that Uther. Crucially, Chromie has not been banned, but it's Yet. not her best map and Gul'dan is already picked, so probably Blakitney will not be yeah. on Chromie. An interesting point that we mentioned yesterday as well is that uh, Tyrande has once again been quite neglected, despite the fact we see her every now and again in the European Pro Division and almost never in Open Division, but neither of these teams wanting to pick her up at all so far. Yeah, Leftovers has pretty much not touched there, whereas yeah. Team Good Guys ran Tyrande maybe like once a series in their final four play days. Yeah. This is the map that we have seen her on, though, every now and again. The max out, max ranged owls could get some really solid value here. It's constant boss scouting. It can be good. And with an ETC, Taranda ETC is just kind of gorgeous. We'll have to see how it plays out. For now, oh, Mothiel yeah. banned for leftovers. And this is where good guys will have to draft some boss control, lest they will give away every boss of the game. What is still available? I mean, I guess plenty of things. Yeah, there's a uh, immediately blanks. Morales technically grenades are very effective at that. There's the Dahaka drag to remove people. Lucio boot. Lucio is still open. Medivh leyline seal possibly. Beautiful. VP not so much. But not so much. It freezes the capture point. Yeah. Tyrael, just in general. Oh, Tyrael Arth is also <laughs> very good. Yeah, if you're still going for that Illidan strike. Oh, I like Tyrael. Tyrael Illidan, not bad. Terrio Illidan and then like a range damage dealer as exactly. well, and you're pretty sorted. Whoa. Stitches Kel'Thas! We're back to this again! All right. Stitches Kel'Thas. Very similar to Dignitas' attempt to take down Fnatic at the Western Clash. Stitches Kel'Thas on Sky Temple. Uh, there was a remark that those heroes aren't as good on Sky Temple as on other maps. With True, such wide open spaces, hitting hooks, and with the amount of flanking that can be done on Kel'Thas, it can be challenging. Wouldn't be surprised if Leftovers grabs another support in Dahaka. Dahaka to flank It was Kel'Thas. so effective for them in the game before last as well. So, yeah. would not hate to see the Dahaka. I'd be down. Hmm. Could yeah. also go with Medivh, but I don't know Leftovers to really go that route. Medivh is quite good against Stitches. I mean, I would like to see them go that route. The Leftovers Medivh seems like it would be pretty good. I just don't know if they run it. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of overlap with Uther as well. Fast that again. Huh. There's still potential for Genji to be picked, so risky. And they go for Leoric over uh, the potential Dahaka here. I think Illidan here, right? Like, you need another assassin. The hunt follows up on Hook just fine. There's only yeah. one support. Precious yeah. Falstad, although Falstad does do a lot of ability damage, so there's still potential there. I think Falstad will have a very tough time if his opponent is Illidan in solo yeah. lines. Man, that is... Well, could, Solar Lake's going to be Leoric, Sonya. so that's not so bad. Yeah, I guess Falstad could stay with the team, but there's always a job to be done for him, as long as there's no th threat on him. Yeah, but yeah, I, I agree the Illidan is almost certainly the choice. Hunting Falstad, basically, at any opportunity is going to be satisfying. Imagine Kerrigan suddenly. Imagine Kerrigan. That would be, for starters, uh, my Imagine Dragon's cover band. Oh! And there she is! Once the a series! The actually makes it in today. Once a series, the trend continues. <laughs> Two good guys will bring her out every now and then. I like it. It's that is an immense amount of lockdown blowout potential. They're all in on the Stitch style. Hook, Hunter's Mark, Gravity Laps, Lunar Flare, Lunar Flare even Arthur's Roots. Root, slow from Rhaegar and, and then damage-wise, everything. Everything. <laughs> When you want damage, having everything is pretty nice, isn't I it? I heard. I heard <laughs> that is the case. Same with healing. If you want healing, you want all of it. Yeah, just take it all. So, uh, solo support Uther, and you've got chain bombs, flame strikes, and long distance owl poke. This is this is a little bit tough for leftovers. Owls are going to do a lot of damage from Tyrande, provide a lot of vision. The boss control isn't really there, 
Hungry, hungry stitches. <laughs> <laughs> if it's going to be Gorge, for the most part, it will just come down to having all the damage for Team Good Guys. If yeah. there are no enemies, they cannot capture the boss point. Like, if we go for heroes who have escape from the hooks, Falstads are not great. He has barrel roll, but, but it's that's limited. It's interruptible. Wraith Walk is the safest by far. Same uh, power side's pretty good. Gul'dan is in serious trouble unless he can drop Horrify. Yeah. And then Uther is basically there to protect everyone else. Self divine shielding is almost never satisfying, which is why I would like Uther to take Divine Storm this game, so that if they do get hooked in, they have the count the option of the counter. Just get hooked on purpose, Divine well, Storm purpose. 5. It's just you have a counter play if your team's near enough. Past. <laughs> I would like well, to see Hinterlands and, and Reign of Destruction from Gul'dan. Why not? Let's head into game number, number six, ladies and gentlemen, between the good guys and leftovers. And spawning on the left-hand side, it is the good guys. And playing for them with a nice comp here. It's going to be Kronaz on that Rhaegar. BKB bringing out the Arthurs here. Zay 3. Kael'thas once again making his way to the series. Anti-hero on the stitches. And Raid Boss brings out the Taranta today. And on the right side in the red. 3-1. Now 3-2. It's leftovers with Linked on Uther. Uh, John Paul Diva on Gul'dan. We've got Blakitney on Falstad. Potiboss on Leoric. I've got Lauber, of course, on ETC. Woohoo! Got a hit. First stack. First uh, stack. Sentinel can get infinite stacks of damage, uh, and it will do more and more damage at greater range. Every hit uh, will be more piercing and more damage. Uh, so the first owl will only hit one target. Once you get five stacks, it can pass through to a second target. And also, it's mana reduction every time you hit it. Somewhere around the 60 to 70 hour mark, it will no longer cost mana. And yeah. at level 13, you grab cooldown reduction. So you can do a lot of spamming owls for vision and damage. Yeah, the other option, there's the uh, the increased cooldown reduction or the harsh moonlight, which can actually get some really good value as well, which is the damage reduction for Taranta. So not only is she making heroes vulnerable, but she's also making them less effective. Very similar to Leoric's uh, ominous Wraith talent. First hook lands, Land. Lunar Flare, Gravity Lapse, Flame oh, Strike, Chain Bolt, linked. and we'll linked. live with what? No! No poison! Oh, it's, oh, it's coming wow. from green to pit, green to red, green to red. He gets it, he's out. Thanks the for the level Radiance up. The actually missed, but <laughs> <laughs> the level up, yeah, that, I think that was the save. Wow, yeah, that because he was looked, close. He looked poisoned for his life, but then level 2 came and he was going to survive. It was yeah. so close. A little bit too much of an overlap here. Uh, Team Good Guys hit the Gravity Lapse and the Lunar Flare at the very same time. Lapse lasts for a second. Lunar Flare is three quarters of a second, so they could have drawn out that duration just a tad. But neither were sure whether the other would pull through and actually hit it. Very close, though. Looks good. Yeah. Good comboing. Um, So... Guardian of the Ancient King? Probably wise. Yeah. Although, <laughs> 50 armor is good, but is it better to save them outright with cleanse? Hand of Protection is pretty good. It has a reasonable duration. It's just a question of how well they time their abilities. That's going to be up to Link here to decide how he wants to play this one. He's gone for just the standard uh, Holy Fire here, giving his team a little bit of AoE. Loba. Holding this point for the moment, look at this, they're backing up. Because for starters, they're outnumbered, but for two, they know that they're going to have a better hooking position as opposed to hooking someone point blank. But they get the hook on Uther. It was off camera, but yeah. it was certainly a hook. He didn't walk forward willingly. Yeah. The follow-up was there, <laughs> but he was saved with just about 10% of his life. So far, the combos look good. And the longer the game goes, the more hero takedowns matter. So that threat will remain the rest of the game. He's been doing, uh, yes, that's going to be a big problem from now on. So we see Kronaz taking some Siege Giants a little bit early here, but he is Rhaegar. He's able to. This, on the other hand, is very, oh, oh. my god, beautiful hook. Follow up CC, and no way, unless Link's going to have his cooldowns. No, he can't. And we are seeing Pokeboss looking for a counter kill. Here comes Kronaz, though. Numbers hugely in favor of good guys here. We will see the Auric escape. This is what's another oh! hook, though. It's Loba. Down he goes. And good guys, two kills on the board. Very nice. And during all this, Siege Camps are pushing. Team Good Guys is looking very good here so far. This is the most ahead they have been in pretty much any map in the series so far. And it's off the back of anti-heroes. Fantastic hooks. 
must feel good for him to have a hook instead of a poison spear here. Uh, no longer Sonia, but indeed the initiator for his team. So uh, Stitches aggressive. here is the main tank, and Antihero is supposed to be the offlaner. It's yeah. just that he happens to be so good at Stitches. Oh, tries to get John Paul Diva there, but he was already uh, already out of his, uh, already out of that area. So the Mercs are taken here by leftovers. Kronas will get the ones for his team as well. It's a little bit slower. Uh, but that's fine. He was soloing it, and the rest of his team was looking for kills. Yeah, and with Taronda there, th she is support, though she's ma mostly taken for vision and damage. Uh, but she does still have a little bit of heal, just enough for Rhaegar not to be too sorely missed. So we do have at level 4 for Taronda. It is going to be the Kaldori Resistance, giving the Spell Shield, which is the usual talent we see here. A lot of times used for self-healing, but it's still very nice. And the Dardashian Archery, getting that crazy damage if she's able to keep attacking at the same target. And the cool thing is there's no ceiling to that. Her auto-attack damage now is around 100 and a little bit. If you keep attacking for an extended period of time, yeah. there's no ceiling. No, it sorry, can be 200 per hit. Yeah. Not the same target, just heroes. Yeah, any yeah. hero, oh. as long as it's within a four-second period. And we do have Guardian of Ancient King, so it's plus 50 armor on any yeah. stunned target if Link times his heals right. Link, Link no, is it's being taken so out. Low. Oh, he gets wow! Out so close it's to the level death up, once I think. again. These level ups just coming at the exact Whoa. right moments. Not that time, though. Falstad gets removed here. But this is such a... Oh, Link eats an owl. He barely survived that as well. But this comp is being so effective for good guys. It's like minor things. Saving it leftovers oh. heroes every time. Look at that. The faith from Taranza dropping that Luna, uh, Luna Flare. Just believing that Antihero would land the shot. And Bruiser Camp is pushing top four on leftovers. It is. And by now, disaster. it seems like Team Good Guys has the better team fight almost without question. And so what Leftovers has here is Leoric Falstad, that global and split soak. But in the team fight, Team Good Guys reign supreme. They're looking close to getting level 10. Not too far ahead, though, of Leftovers, as yeah. the laser shots will go to the Leftovers. Yeah, I don't... I guess... How does that happen, right? I don't know. It's because Stitches is more of like a backline tank. You don't just yeah, walk have, forward, push check. Arthas. Yeah, that's true. They could have just walked it. They could have just walked in. Tried to play too fancy off of hook engage. Didn't no. push out leftovers. Safe play. Potentially too safe. We will have to see as the game progresses. As for now, Bogdini is potentially about to be ganked, but he is very a bit a bit farther back. Uh, Arthur's, despite being pretty effective on ganks, not as effective as Genji, and as such, Falstad is able to retreat. Feels good as Falstad. At the same time, not to instantly die as soon as someone <laughs> looks at you. <laughs> so. Here we have the level 10s. It is the Putrid Vile for Antihero here. Does Ooh. not land the hook on Loba. March of the Black King coming in for the uh, Leoric here and Mosh Pit for Loba. Oh, wow. Okay. They're committed. They've got Gus. They've got March, Horrify. They've got a lot of crowd control and some pretty decent damage. Now, the cool thing about Mosh Pit is, hold up that thought, narrow Face miss belt. there on Lunar Flare. The cool thing about Mosh Pit is, the way that Team Good Guys is using their abilities, it's Hook, Gravity Lapse, Lunar Flare, or Hook, Lunar Flare, Gravity Lapse. After that, there are zero interrupts for Mosh Pit. So if an engage fails, Lauber will counter-engage. Root does not land. Lauber, power size just for good measure, even though the hook would not have hit him, but he obviously doesn't want to be hit by the hook in any scenario. Currently, Owls are on a 14 stacks, which is always nice. Not too bad, but not too great either. Mana Addict, 16 out of 20. Echoed Corruption, 29 out of 40. Everyone else is about halfway with their quests. Except for Falstad, who's currently on 12. Has quite a long way to go with that season marksman. Shadow Stalk on Taronda. She can assume cloaked form and 30% bonus movement speed and comes out of it with that move speed and extra attack speed. Which combos so well with the Dardashian Archery. Can give you some crazy damage output. If you are even, you can even just become a backline ranged assassin there. And I don't mean your backline, I mean your opponent's backline. Wrap around with the stealth and you can potentially blow up those squishier backline heroes. Now, the experience uh, situation is something you might expect when you look at these teams. 3 0 in takedowns, that's what Good Guys specializes in. But with Falstad Leoric, Minion Clear is what they specialize in. And this will, rema will, will remain a thing. Yeah. Also, when Falstad gets 20 with Epic Mount, he'll be so safe, pushing deep. And Leoric doesn't care as much about dying as other heroes. 
Oti, before Watch the retreat, it. Loma, immediate cleanse, immediate, but they still go on to stitches. Gust as well, putting out here a so bright position at the horrified, but they've just grouped everyone up here. Ancestral lands, Kronas will almost Whoa. certainly fall. Beautiful Luna Flare. Wow. Kronas may actually escape. This fight is bananas, Grubby. They finally take that oh. to Rasta, but oh. Stitches gets detonated too. Poti being forced to retreat. That's a one for one. Oh, this fight was so cool. I want to see it five more times. <laughs> the layers there. Morspit Divine Shield and the Gust into ETC. The Horrify follow-up. Rhaegar's almost certain death. But then the three-man Lunar Flare. Crazy. And all the while, Keltha, Salama, Ashelanoring the enemy team to death with that burnt flash finally taking down ETC. A one-for-one, one, but what a magnificent sequence of abilities oh, by both four. teams. Uh, that four in the mid lane surviving with just a little bit of health. But like you said, Beautiful sequence here, very nicely played. Zinches also full slam build, but now flea bag. This is absolutely a fishing hook build. Ah, yes. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, anytime you get stunned by ETC or Uther, for example, you get a cooldown reduction on all your basic abilities. That means you don't get a hook every 16 seconds as normally, you can get a hook every 10 seconds. Which is. Very nice if you are. And also, it still affects your slam. Even without the extra radius and the reduced cooldown, oh, you can right. still get you get the cooldown reduction from that instead. So it can work out pretty nicely. Even and though you're not doing as much of an area of damage, you're still doing damage. And since the slam cooldown is eight, that means pretty much instant slam whenever you get stunned. Exactly. So we are seeing both teams rotating around. They have to be. Leftovers are potentially too far forward against the kind of comp they are playing against, in my opinion, but yeah. they are able to move back to their side of the map without getting caught out by a hook. Everyone's looking at the boss. The boss control tools for Leftovers are better. Mighty Gust, Horrify, Divine Shield, Face Melt, and Moshpit. Team Good Guys just has damage and uh, a lot of stunts, but they can't push away anyone from that boss. To run the go for power, by the way, and Leora, keep it with Neil Peasants, isn't able to clear that lane, and that's such top fort will go down. He needs to rotate to make sure he's near his team, basically at all times. Specifically, he was afraid that the boss would be started and he wouldn't arrive in time. Now, Falstad will be that off lane duty. Yep, Falstad. Even Falstad isn't doing it. They're just using their own bruiser camp, and hopefully that will clear it for them. If not, those towers in the top lane shall be losing some ammo. They're really unwilling here, Leftovers, to give up this... Uh, oh. <laughs> leftovers is so unwilling to give up this siege camp. Not even sending anyone top. Yeah, now they're gonna try and take. Now they're gonna try and take it. Good guys are in position. Look at Loba though. It's actually a really nice position. The owl will not have seen him here. Exactly. Very key. Siege camp now taken by leftovers. They keep what is rightfully theirs. Exactly. No raid by good guys. They were hovering around the area, but decided against it. Pro uh, probably a good chance of that due to the lack of vision on the ETC. They don't want to take the risk. Down goes uh, something. I'm not sure what died there. Uh, mid fort. There. Yeah, it mid was one shot. There. Yeah. <laughs> so the siege giant is still actually alive. So that's pretty nice. Kael'thas decides to change that factor at post haste. It will all be about the hooks and the counter engage. There's a big minion wave coming. Yeah. Oh, ETC. He thought, he thought about the play, changed his mind. But that is now gravity lapsed down for at least a little bit. Another 10 seconds or so. That means Hook will only have Lunar Flare follow up and no interrupt for Moshpit. Hook misses, Lunar Flare is out. Moshpit is now a threat. Yeah. They're looking for it. Here comes the future pile. They're just moving forward. Horrify moves all the damage back, though. Kael'thas is zoned away. BKB is dropping low. Potiboss doing a great job zoning Antihero. The living bombs, though, getting so much value. Both these teams, a whole lot of hustle and bustle. But, oh, as you see, he got in a little bit of trouble. He tried to mount up in the Phoenix that actually got demounted. Well, he did try to dodge the hook, and he did so admirably. But yeah. that was still a really good fight for Team Good Guys. Didn't have to use Ancestral Healing. And Horrify and Gust were used, so Leftovers definitely scrambling for safety. And here we have the bottom keep wall going down. Now, even though you've got a level lead, Team Good Guys does not go for the boss here. Not against Fast Starting and ETC. No, look who might be going for the boss, or at least for the Siege Giants here. Yes, they it could. is going to be Leftovers. The Siege Giants, I wouldn't mind. Oh. They found BKB. Get him. Get BKB. him. BKB. Hit him. Oh, ETC. Icebound so Fortitude. Sure. Icebound Fortitude, yeah. like you said. So good. And BKB. Gonna be getting out of there. What? Uh oh. oh. Danger! Oh. Ray Fork, it's not available. Down goes Leo. He was stun locked the entire time, and that's the dream. The max range fishing hook. <laughs> yeah. 
perfect hit there at the very max of range indeed. Lunar Flare hitting slightly too early simply because that hook needs a lot of time <laughs> to reel and sink here. Uh, but the Kel'Thas Gravity Labs was there. Nice kill on Leo. He'll be back for another, well, he'll be back in about two seconds or so. And the temple shots go to yeah. Team Oh Good my guys. god, what are they doing? Oh Flick my the, god! Drops the gust. There's the horror fight. Splits the team a bit. Loma moving in as well. Looking for the big stun. But Stitches is so tanky. The Divine Shield will keep False alive though. Leo is getting some really good ominous wraith value. But that's going to be it. Oh, Loma's hooked in. Face melt. Keeping himself safe. Very cool fight here. More spit is still available. But he can't just use it. Not with the oh, stun still the out. Drain. Labor, of course, knows Gravity Labs yeah. is still available, so it's Lunar Flare. Temple Shots, though, two leftovers. Woo! Ancestral is gone, though. You can see all the abilities came out there. The root, the both stuns, everything came out after that hook. 32 owl stacks for Tyrande. Certainly not, not uh, bad. Yeah, not too shabby. It could be better, but then again, that's against players that try not to dodge it. And, <laughs> uh, this, is, this is leftover, so 32 is fine. Now 34. Starting to do some annoying damage, stressing Uther's mana pool. Exactly, and that is a big issue with Uther being the solo healer. Luckily, the majority of the heroes here have some form of self-sustain in the form of ETC Guitar Hero with Rock Rock, which is not fully stacked, actually. He still needs five more. Uh, Falstad has his hammer gain, so as long as he can find a minion wave, he's fine. And the Oryx, the Oryx. Uh, even even Gul'dan has his own life drain. Level 20 will be pretty huge for leftovers. Uh, getting Horrify, Haunt with the three-second duration. And yet, few games on Sky Temple actually make it that relevantly to level 20. By that time, usually, there's someone already in a clear lead. It's the next temple phase and the potential, potential boss control that will be very key in uh, starting to take away the first keep. The false sound has gained so much more value this game than it did last game, though yeah. that is such a big deal that he's actually able to split push right now. Pulti finds the entire enemy team, drops Ray Fork very early able to escape. Al will find him, but he's still alive, so that's the important bit. Barely, that Al did a lot of damage. That was very close. A few more Owl stacks and he would have been dead. I think maybe four more stacks and... Quite possibly. Mark and Mending, by the way, for Tyrande at level 16, so she's making herself not only crazy on the damage output, but pretty sustainy as well. And it heals the whole team during Hunter's Mark. It heals yeah. her outside of it and everyone extra during the Mark. One Temple phase. Hmm. This is dangerous for good guys. If they contest the temple phase, leftovers could just go for the boss. They, they are very loath to leave this space. Mm, we see leftovers, like you said, they are hanging around this area. Only Falstad, who is already flying down. They're making the play. Gust catches Kael'thas. This time he's the perfect target. Moshmi gets him. They're turning it around, trying to get stitches. Where's the Ancestral? It's available. They haven't dropped it. There we go, Ancestral. Will keep BKB alive as they turn it around and kill off Uther. But he's now Uther in ghost form, healing all the entire Whoa. team. Anti-hero gets focused. He heals himself, but it's not enough. Two kills going over to the leftovers. Good guys. Only grabbing Uther. Very cool fight here. Uther, not the one you want to take down unless you can't help it. Still, it's a kill, but he ends up healing the rest of the team, securing another kill. Wow, Stitches yeah. was survivable in that fight. No gust for this. Just remember, Arthur's uh -oh. Owl. This could owl. be danger. <laughs> is everyone fond of Owls? Not the good guys. But Loma's face melt is going to be enough. The ho There's no horrifying, no gust, nothing. But they don't. The good guys don't want to take a three v four. And as such, that boss is taken. There's still a fort down there. We'll take a couple hits from the boss, and that's going to give them a little bit of time. There was a big minion wave on bottom keep here of the leftovers. They lose about 15% of their keep HP. Shots currently being taken up in the top lane. Falstad is not in fly range right now, but he can be there very quickly as long as his team doesn't force a fight too fast. Looks like he is moving up to fly to his team now. The boss is tanking most of the minions, so bot lane is mostly clear. No, he's staying at least a little bit longer. Level 20, so close for leftovers. Two minions away. There we go. What did it oh. take? Poti is fine. Redemption for Uther. Yeah, we have a fair choice. Epic mount for false dad. That's a big deal. That is the tour bus for ETC. Wow, and Death it March. is Death March. Hooray! <laughs> I've been wanting to see this for so long. He doesn't have a lot of drain hope talents, but still. The extra range is all he really needs. Yeah. I see that. Yeah, there's well, extra range, not the. Uh, it is uh, no longer an untalented exactly, drain. Exactly. That's it's what I'm saying. It just means he's going to hit more heroes with it. So it's still fine. 
Yeah, Ominous but I mean, wave uh, is still too, still really good. Yeah, it's a uh, very strong talent here. Death March attaching Drain Hope to everyone as you march. Which is going to be good. Stitches and Arthas, just those two, just those two alone is why this is decent. So, Poti Boss, clear in the mid lane, doing the best he can. While the rest of Leftovers, they have taken map control. They have a some semblance here. Able to take the Siege Giants, both sets in the bottom lane. Boss did weaken that top uh, bot keep. Uh, the t shots, Ooh. however, weakened the top keep. And there's nothing they can do about that, unfortunately, without sending Leo or Falstad. Well, I guess you could send Falstad and fly away. I always, like he's tempted. I always wondered why people didn't, don't take that risk. Oh, there he's going. He's just dodging the minion wave. Yeah, sneaking around, hiding from vision. No one's there. He's going to get this, not even an issue. And then fly to the bottom, join yep. his team. And down goes the fort. That's nice. Anti-magic shell, by the way, for Arthas. And that could be huge. And hardened shell on stitches. You can see oh how both God. of the teams are respecting the power of Horrify yeah. to split them off. Durandra, on the other hand, went for the Ice Blade Arrows, which is still extra attack speed and slowing her enemies. I'm surprised they didn't go for the uh, Shadow Stalk upgrade. It reveals all enemies yeah, for two seconds. Stitches. Every 20 <laughs> seconds. So it's, it's pretty good. But I guess she already has Owls now with 48 stacks of bonus damage. Aggressive play coming out here from the good guys, looking for hook opportunities. Jump or, <laughs> Jump or Demon not wanting to be in that area, finally moves towards some structures that can block the hooks. The funny thing is, he was a theoretical hook. Had yeah. Antihero blindly thrown it out, he would have been caught. Yeah, maybe if Toronto had taken the level 20 talent, it would have seen him as that. <laughs> Dude, she ruined the game. <laughs> <laughs> we see Falstead for now, pushing the bot lane. He wants to put some pressure onto that keep. And this is the joy of a global hero, the ability to do this. They can put pressure onto the bot keep. He's actually being very passive with it because they don't know where everyone is. You can see Wolf Scout and most people here, they would know that Falstead is safe to push, at least for now. Double tempo control by Team Good Guys. They are down yeah, a keep. Yeah, that hurts. But this is nice for them. Falstad, he's just going to go for a keep. He is, and Blink he can do keep. that. He yeah. can do that. As long as the rest of his team are able to hold the line and uh, at least Could not take too many shots. In fact, everyone's rotated down here, so they're actually coming up really good in this. So they're not taking two, shot, uh, two temples worth of shots, only one. And then Falstad keep. gets this, and they can come up to help, and they can actually fight 5v5 on the last keep. The leftovers could even just let all the... Temple charges go, I, I guess. They are. They're going to lose one keep, at least. Potentially two. Tyrande's coming loses. back. Here we see that uh -oh. fabled 1v1 False potential end. for Tyrande. False end run. Stun lands. So much damage. And oh. epic <laughs> mount. He's gone. He's gone. But that was half False Dad's health in just like one auto attack and two abilities. But that's about all she can do, right? Like, she can't really take him out. Yeah, exactly. If he did, if he didn't have epic mount, he would absolutely be dead. Tyrande could chase him down and actually drop the stun. Could have chased him down and dropped the stun afterwards. Yeah, exactly. That's true. I mean, he does have uh, the afterburner at 60. Yeah. Oh, uh -oh. Next danger! He's healing up, keeping himself sustained. He has redemption. Marsh pit. Torbus gets the Rhaegar. That's such a huge deal. They're trying to focus him down, but Rhaegar is but tanking Gul'dan, through Gul'dan this. Gul'dan is getting Gul'dan is so zoned here. Raid boss doing such a good job. Horrify is used. Link and Raid boss are going to... Link and Diva are going to try and turn this round. Just the two of them here with Uther down again. He's once again getting that second wave of healing. Healing. Gul'dan is actually set, getting away here. Good route, though. Get him licked. Get the healing. Arthas, he needs one more route. We already see ETC is powered away. Falstad for the rescue. Slow. No mighty gust available. Down he goes. Falstad's basically on his own here. Well, that should probably be it. Team Good, ETC. Team Good Guys still has Ancestral. Healing available. This was such a good fight by Good Guys. Taronda went straight for the back line. Gul'dan and Falstad couldn't yeah. follow up at all. ETC and Uther were by themselves. Okay. Leo will be back soon. No. ETC is dropping CC. Blakitney's doing any damage. But like you said, the health bars are so high here. There's nothing they can do. And that is likely going to be it. That is GG. Wow. And Grubby. We are heading to the tiebreaker. Game number seven. As good guys take game number six. Very well played by good guys. The best shape we have seen them in so far in this series with some inspiring stitches play and follow up there with Toronda as well. Very, very nice fight there. And, uh, you know, leftovers, they're down to 3 3. I thought they were a shoe in for this match. But now it comes down to that final map, which is going to be Cursed Hollow. Yes, Cursed Hollow is the last map. We were able to see it as the last available thing there. 
But such a good comeback from good guys. If someone show, if you showed someone the first two games of this series and told them that's this game, this series is going to a game seven, they'd be like, "No, you're crazy." Yeah, they, bet, get, they got some people, one kill. You're weird. Some but, leftover fans must have walked away. They were like, uh, uh, "Team Good Guys fans yeah. must have walked away." They were like, but "Okay." Some leftovers fans just like, "Oh, this is over. I'm just yeah. <laughs> going to go get a drink." Grouse leftovers. But no, we three, are three. heading to the tiebreaker. Game number seven, but it's going to be coming up after a very short break. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back very soon with game number seven. Uh, the afterburner at 16. Yeah. Oh, uh -oh. Meg Danger! He's healing up, keeping himself sustained. He has redemption. Marsh pit. Torbus gets the Rhaegar. That's such a huge deal. They're trying to focus him down, but Rhaegar is but taking Gul'dan through Gul'dan this. Gul'dan is getting Gul'dan is so zoned here. Raid Boss doing such a good job. Horrify is used. Link and Raid Boss are going to... Link and Diva are going to try and turn this round. Just the two of them here with Uther down again. He's once again getting that second wave of healing. Gul'dan is actually set, getting away here. Good root though. Get him licked. Get the healing. Arthas, he needs one more root. We already see ETC is powering away. Falstad for the rescue. Slow. No mighty gust available. Down he goes. Falstad's basically on his own here. Well, that should... The UED Expedition